This is a review for the moving average crossover indicator. This is what it looks like pretty much out of the box. Uh, I've changed the slow moving average to 200 and the fast moving average to 20 and I've turned off the smoothing but I definitely encourage you to play around with the smoothing you can smooth it with all these different moving averages play around with everything type in a bunch of numbers see how it changes the charts these indicators work great right out of the box but it's also possible to really fine tune it for the instrument that you trade and the time frame that you trade or if you trade a tick chart or a volume chart you can find some more ideal settings that might be better customized to your personal situation I wanted to share a couple of creative ways that I like to use this moving average crossover and then once you find the settings that you like and you get the indicator set up exactly how you like you can go to template you can save the template so later you can load this template for this indicator onto any chart and you don't have to calculate all this you don't have to change all the settings again it'll already be loaded for you so I'm gonna load a template that I have for this I've taken away the bar bias and just made two simple bar colors uh, it's a little bit easier for me to see today is September 12th of Monday this is what happened in the market this morning. This is pre-market. We got a little short signal on the crossover. 723 down to 693 in pre-market. There's 30 points right there. You can see as we break above here, we get a bullish signal on the moving average crossover. Uh, pulled back nicely to our moving average and then took off again when it broke above this cloud. I'd like to share a couple of creative ways that you can use this moving average crossover indicator. Over here I have the same setup and then I've added a few different instances of the moving average crossover. I've added the indicator I just showed you with the 20 EMA and the 200 EMA for the slow moving average. And then I've also added another moving average crossover with an EMA of 50 and I'm leaving the slow as 200 and then I added one more with an EMA of 100 and the slow moving average is still 200 for me this creates a very nice visual representation of the market trend and also gives me a few ideas for pullback trades and then what I've done with this chart is I've added four different correlated instruments I've got a NASDAQ chart I've got an ES chart I've got a YM chart and a Bitcoin chart just because Bitcoin seems to be moving with the indices lately. So this is the same chart I was just showing you for September 12th on the NASDAQ up here. If we look at it with this setup with all the different correlated markets coming into the market open, uh, right around 9.15 we get a bullish signal on the ES and we're already bullish on Bitcoin. Shortly after 9.20, the YM joins, so we have three bullish factors. And then right at the New York Open, we get a bullish signal on the moving average crossover indicator on the NASDAQ. So that would be a great spot to get in. Uh, you could also wait for a pullback. It pulled back right to this moving average and then took off again. Uh, you could get in right at that moving average, or you could wait for confirmation when it broke out above this light blue shaded area. About 90 points move on the NASDAQ. And as long as this top light blue shaded area is thick and it's constantly expanding, there's, there's plenty of this shaded area. We're definitely still looking for longs. When you see this light blue area start to contract, there, there, it's getting narrower. It's not, it's not wide and thick here. It's, the space that the light blue shaded area is taking up is getting smaller and smaller. Uh, we'd be looking to exit if we were in a trade or we might possibly be looking for a short trade. And as you can see as it contracted and got smaller and smaller there it's barely visible the light blue shaded area and we have a nice drop of about 50 points on the NASDAQ right there. And now we're getting a 
bearish signal printing on Bitcoin. Our light blue area is still barely visible on all of these. So we would be keeping our eyes open for potential retracement here. And the market definitely starts retracing at that point. You could also take breakouts of this 200 moving average. It broke out almost in the same candle, pretty much all the different indices. With the NASDAQ having such a bullish trend all morning, I definitely want to wait till it broke these lows before I got into a trade on the NASDAQ. There's a 30 point drop in the NASDAQ, 10 points on the ES, 70 ticks on the YM. Uh, we can look at the previous day. It's actually a very similar looking day. Uh, in the pre-market we have three out of the four printing bearish on the moving average crossover indicator. Um, had some pretty good moves in the pre-market. 10 points short on the ES, 30 point move south on the NASDAQ. And then as we are coming into the market open, we get a bullish print on the NASDAQ. And once the ES and the YM join forces, we could possibly get in there or, but since it's been moving up for a while already, we would probably want to wait for a retracement. And using these moving average crossover bands, these shaded areas, we can use these for pullback entries. Comes right into this next shaded area and bounces there. Uh, if we wanted to wait for confirmation, we could wait for confirmation when this blue ES candle crossed above the light shaded area here. And there's about 13 points on the ES. Uh, and then again, you see these light blue areas are starting to contract and get smaller, get more narrow. So we're either looking to exit or take a possible trade in the opposite direction. And as you can see, they do kind of drift down a little bit. And yet another way that I like to use this moving average crossover indicator is to throw up a 30 second NASDAQ chart, a two minute NASDAQ chart, and a five minute NASDAQ chart. Uh, if you like trading tick charts, you could also do you know, a 200 tick, a 1000 tick, and a 2000 tick. But this is for September 12th right before the New York Open. See in our longer term, our five minute time frame, we are definitely bullish. Our two minute time frame, a little bit bearish, it's just kind of ranging. And then right around the New York Open, we have all three time frames turn bullish. So we can definitely look to get long or wait for a retracement. Comes right back down to the moving average on both the 30 second and the two minute chart. And then blasts off almost 100 points there. And then the day before, on Friday last week, we have our two higher time frames still bullish. We come into the New York Open and maybe 15 minutes into the New York Open, we get the moving average crossover signal turn bullish on the 32nd. So once all three time frames are in alignment, we can get into a long. Those are just some of the ways that I like to use it. There's an infinite amount of creative ways you could use this by itself and in conjunction with other indicators and I thoroughly support you playing around and learning all the different parameters and finding out which works best for your instrument in your time frame. I obviously like trading the NASDAQ, I like how fast it moves but I know there's a lot of people that really like trading the ES, it's more slow and steady, there's more volume, you can trade bigger size. I just never personally liked it but I know there's a lot of people that are very successful trading things like the ES and things like Renko charts and that's their bread and butter and their favorite thing to trade and they do it well. So I definitely encourage you to spend a lot of time playing around with the charts and finding your own special custom settings that work best for what you trade.